G'day guys, Ian here, and today we're gonna to show you how to set up a bioactive enclosure. Now guys, if you are new to this channel and you haven't already done so, please do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications, and welcome to Cookies Critters. Hey guys, so like I mentioned in the introduction, today we are setting up a bioactive enclosure. Now, this little one will just be as a uh, as a living garden inside our reptile room, um, but maybe in the future we may decide to uh, actually have frogs in there, and specifically green tree frogs. So guys, uh, either way you do this, the process is the same. The, uh, the only consideration is if you are planning on having living animals inside these enclosures, that you need to choose plants that are appropriate for that animal. Now guys, uh, stick around, let's get into the build. Okay guys, so the very first thing that you're gonna need is an enclosure like this. Now this little guy was second hand and we've gone ahead and we have thoroughly cleaned it and thoroughly disinfected it with F10. So for you out there that don't know what F10 is, it is a veterinary grade animal disinfectant, uh, perfect for any kind of uh, reptile or amphibian enclosure. So we wanna make sure that this enclosure is not harboring any viruses and any bacteria that may potentially grow once we start adding uh, fuels and moisture and humidity uh, for that virus to live on. So uh, guys, any enclosure, even if it's brand new, before you throw an animal in there, we always recommend F10, disinfect it, make sure you clean that product before you use it. So this guy's been cleaned, and another tip is to make sure that you do check it to make sure it does hold water. Now, this one here doesn't indicate that it is uh, a waterproof glass enclosure, so we actually did a, uh, a leaks test on it yesterday to make sure that it holds water. Simply all you need to do is just fill up the, uh, the bottom half up to the, uh, the bottom of the door there and make sure that no water is, uh, is weeping or seeping through the, uh, the, the silicon edges here. Uh, this little one here did pass the water test, so uh, we're ready to get started on our bioactive. So guys, if we were to call this the first step, I like to do the preparation and include a, uh, a little drainage pipe. Now, this little drainage pipe here will allow any surface water or water below the, uh, the substrate to actually be siphoned out, so that way we don't get that uh, smelly bacterial water that will potentially affect our plants and potentially affect our animals that we're gonna put in there. Now, simply all we need to do is get a length of PVC tubing. Uh, I always recommend just measure off the, uh, the height of the face panel here and just go around about uh, a centimeter or 10 mil below the, uh, below the height of the, uh, of the door here. Aim for your finished level, your finished substrate height uh, as an indicator of how tall that you wanna cut this little riser. Now, the next thing that you wanna do is on the base of it is you wanna cut out this little notch just here, right? Now, simply you can either use a drill and punch a drill hole through there, you know, adequate size, maybe a, uh, a 10 millimeter or even a one inch drill bit, which is you know, pretty easy to do. In this situation, we just used a little hacksaw, cut the, uh, the sides and then just bent the flap up. Now, uh, always when you've got PVC and you're making a cut, just get a, uh, a metal file and just file the edges smooth. So that way there's, uh, there's no risk of, uh, of any nicks and cuts uh, for yourself. You know? So simply what we're gonna do is we're gonna install this little riser into the glass tank using a bit of uh, roof and gutter silicon. Hey guys, so with the, uh, the little riser for your wastewater pipe, we, uh, we don't wanna have it hard up against the side here, because if we go hard up against the side, when you look at the uh, exterior of the enclosure, you are going to see this ugly white pipe. Whereas if we offset the pipe, maybe uh, two or three centimeters, or you know, for you that are inclined, about an inch away from the side of the, uh, the glass there, when we actually fill up the substrate, the substrate is going to hide and conceal this uh, PVC riser. So simply all we need to do is just run a bead of silicon around the base of the riser.
put the riser into place. So simply all we need to do is leave this riser in place for the next 24 hours while we're waiting for the silicon to cure. So guys, it's been about 24 hours now and the silicon on that PVC waste pipe has now dried. So the next step before we put in our drainage base is to measure out a piece of fly screen so that way the, uh, the substrate, the soil base, doesn't filter through that drainage base. And now that we have that little uh, drainage pipe in there, we do need to measure and, uh, and cut out a little hole in the, uh, in the fly screen as well. And to do that, simply all we need to do is rotate this uh, enclosure upside down. Okay, so from here in the uh, enclosure being upside down, simply all you need to do is lay a roll of fly screen on top and then cut it out using either a Stanley knife or a pair of normal kitchen scissors. So simply, we have our fly screen that we've already cut and measured to size. And all we need to do using our Stanley knife is cut a little T or a little cross where the, uh, the waste pipe is going to be. Okay, so that way through the floor screen, the waste pipe can penetrate through. So flipping the enclosure back over. At this point, we can put our uh, drainage base in. And for our drainage base, we are using black scoria. It is a volcanic rock. It is porous. Uh, it is free draining and very easy to use as a drainage base. So simply what we want to do is we want to pour a drainage base in around about three to four centimeters, maybe inch and a half-ish. Okay, so one of the main reasons why I like black scoria as a drainage base is when you put the fly screen on and then when you actually put your substrate, your soil base in, the, uh, the scoria blends in quite nicely. You don't see a, uh, a clear change in color from maybe a creamy gray brown pebble to your uh, soil base. So black scoria uh, will blend into your bioactive quite nicely. Okay, so next step is to put your fly screen on top, bearing in mind where your, uh, your little cutout is for the waste pipe. So the next step is to mix the substrate base. Hey guys, to make the bioactive substrate, you are gonna need a few things to, uh, to make your soil nice and rich. So a, uh, a mixture of wash play sand, a corpeat brick, so your cocoa husk, uh, some fine or even coarse pine bark, some horticulture charcoal, and some sphagnum moss. Now, Obviously, the first step is going to be to turn this compressed brick into a uh, nice, loose, fluffy uh, substrate that we can work with. And to do that, what we need is a bucket of warm water. Now, simply all we need to do is submerge the brick into the, uh, the warm to hot water uh, over time, about 15, 20 minutes, that, uh, that brick, that compressed brick, will soak up all the water and start to soften and to, uh, to break down. As we can see, the, uh, the brick's already soaking up all the moisture and starting to come quite loose. So we can assist this progress by just breaking it up. Okay, so now that the, uh, the, the cocoa peat has actually absorbed all the water and is now nice and loose and fluffy, we can start actually mixing our ratios for the uh, bioactive substrate. Okay, so having a spare bucket here is gonna be handy so that way we can actually mix it all together. Now, simply what we want is one part of core peat, one part of the loose bark, one part of sand and 
two parts of sphagnum moss. Now, I didn't forget the charcoal because we are going to add that in later, um, but obviously we don't want to be adding too much charcoal because the, uh, the charcoal is ideal for drainage, but we don't want to overdo it. Right, now you can use a cup, you can use like a little shovel or something like that. Uh, we're just going to eyeball it and just go rough, so we're just going to go by, uh, by, by hand scoops. Okay, so this uh, substrate's all mixed up. I'm just gonna bring the camera in so that you guys can see what it looks like. Now, things to uh, take note of is this soil is not dripping wet, right? It's nice and loose, um, but it actually does retain plenty of moisture due to the uh, sphagnum moss. As we can see, it's nice and loose not dripping with water. The uh, sphagnum moss will hold moisture, the sand will make the soil nice and free draining, and we will actually add some uh, horticulture charcoal in now to improve the soil drainage. So just by eyeballing that, we've gone around about two cups. So uh, the ratio would have been uh, one part sand, one part of the corp heat, uh, one part of the pine bark, two parts sphagnum moss, and uh, half a part of the charcoal. So I'll just give that a mix in. Okay, right, cool. So just going to make some room on the bench, and now we're going to actually add our substrate to the little uh, glass enclosure. Uh, so guys, before you add your soil base, it's important to get a bit of uh, masking tape and cover the end of that drainage pipe, that way we're not going to fill it up with uh, loose substrate. Okay, so we've got the perfect amount of substrate mix for our little bioactive enclosure. Uh, if you do want to have the substrate ramped up higher to the back, so that way you get uh, more of a fuller natural look, uh, by all means, do so. Uh, for this situation, because I know the plants that we're putting in are quite large already, uh, if we do that, we're going to exceed the, uh, the size of the plants that we can use. So, uh, next step is to prepare our plants. Hey guys, so here are the plants that we have for our bioactive enclosure. Uh, unfortunately, by eyeballing it, I don't think this bromeliad at the back is uh, suitably sized. I think the enclosure is a little bit too small for it, but we'll see how we go. Um, but in terms of the, uh, uh, the philodendrons and the, uh, the peace lilies and stuff like that, um, they are going to be an awesome mix for this bioactive. Now, what we do need to do is we need to prepare the plants uh, for the bioactive. Now, if you are only planting a bioactive enclosure and you don't intend on putting uh, animals in there in the future, then using the potting mix with a bit of fertilizer is going to be suitable for that kind of setup. Now, because we do intend on having green tree frogs in, their, uh, in the enclosure down the track, we want to remove that soil base, we want to remove the potting mix with the fertilizer because potentially that fertilizer could be damaging for the green tree frogs. So simply all we need to do is we need to get our plant and we need to remove the potting mix into the, uh, into the large bucket behind us. Now, once we've removed as much of the soil mix as we can, we need to wet down the roots so that way we can uh, wash off any excess fertilizers. So all we're doing is giving the pot a bit of a, uh, bit of a squeeze so that way when we uh, pull the plant out, we're not going to damage the root base. Just gently tease the roots and all the potting mix is going to fall off it. Okay, so there we have it. The, uh, the root ball itself is fairly soil free, but there is a bit of residual potting mix with the uh, fertilizer on there. So we are going to rinse that down. So for the time being, what we're going to do is we're just going to place them back into their original pots until we repeat the process for all the plants.
So actually, before I uh, tease the soil out of this little philodendron here, um, it's worth having a look at the soil structure. Now, the soil structure of this pot plant looks very similar to that that we've created with the, uh, the bioactive substrate. So, you know, perfect example of how that substrate ties in with, uh, with planting these plants. Okay guys, so all the plants have been prepared, all their roots have been rinsed down. Now what we need to do is roughly map out where we want everything to go, bearing in consideration the, uh, the approximate root size of, uh, of each plant and, and obviously the way that they grow. Like we do have a philodendron in here, which is a, uh, a growing vine type. So having considerations for maybe a piece of driftwood or a piece of bark, for the, uh, the, the vine to coil around and grow. So uh, let's get into it. Hey right, guys, so at the start of this build, I was uh, a little bit unsure whether we're actually going to use this bromeliad. It is a gorgeous plant, uh, especially with the nice contrasting red flower on the top. Uh, unfortunately, like as we can see, you know, there's no way that this is gonna fit uh, with that lid on. We do have a, uh, another enclosure, another bioactive build. So this one here with the extra vertical height in the other enclosure will actually be quite uh, quite suitable. Uh, otherwise, this is just gonna overcrowd this, uh, this glass enclosure. But not to worry, we do have this uh, beautiful little piece lily here. We're gonna use that as our, uh, as our feature plant and then we're just gonna plant around it. And see, as we can see, the, uh, the roots have been cleaned from their uh, soil base. The main consideration, yes, there's a bit of loose bark on there, but we have washed off any excess fertilizer. So guys, uh, an important consideration when you're actually planning out where your plants are gonna go is obviously thinking about where you want things in the future if you intend on using this as a, uh, as a living terrarium for you know, things like geckos and frogs. So uh, obviously a consideration for a uh, water bowl, uh, where you wanna have that placed. So guys, other considerations other than just the, uh, the planting of your bioactive enclosure is hardscapes. So something like these uh, grapevine driftwood add a nice piece of contrast, uh, but it also allows for future considerations for things like geckos and frogs to, uh, to actively bask on and perch upon. So guys, uh, you can use pieces of uh, driftwood, you can use pieces of uh, dried out bark, there's uh, a lot of different options when it comes to your hardscapes of your bioactive. And so guys, don't feel like once you've actually put the plants in place that that's their final location. If you feel that you need to move things around, especially once you put your little hard structures in, uh, by all means, this is a uh, evolving project. Uh, sometimes when you plant something out in your head, it doesn't quite look the same when you actually uh, do it in real life. So. We're just gonna move this piece loo into the back center to make it more of a, uh, a feature piece. Hey guys, so the, uh, the final step is, after the plants are done, we need to add a, uh, a layer of loose litter or a, uh, or a fine mulch to retain that moisture. Now, if you were to use something like sphagnum moss, 
it is going to retain a lot of moisture on that top surface and potentially start growing mold. So things like dry leaves and, uh, and dry bark will work ideal in this situation. We're about to put the mulch in, but behind the scenes, we did decide to add this artificial background. And the reason for that was to give a bit of extra depth and a bit of extra layering for this uh, bioactive enclosure. Now, with the mulch itself, we've gone for a, uh, a coarse grade pine bark. Now, we will be adding around about two and a half centimeters, so an inch of the, uh, of the pine bark as the, uh, the mulch layer. And so at the moment, the, uh, the little uh, masking tape cap is still on our PVC waste pipe, and we're gonna leave that there until we finish the mulch layer. Hey okay, guys, so that's about all you need. For an enclosure this size, uh, we probably used maybe six to eight large sort of double handfuls. Uh, just bearing in mind, you don't wanna have too much mulch around the actual plant themselves. Uh, otherwise you'll end up starting to uh, to choke and ring bark the plants. Um, the guys from here, we're gonna wet down the enclosure and I'll give the uh, plants a bit of a drink. Um, and then essentially from here, it's just your cleanup crew and your lighting that needs to go in next. Hey guys, so here we have it. The enclosure is all planted out and the, uh, the mulch is in place. And as we uh, bring the camera in closer, we can still see that the little uh, masking tape cap is on the uh, PVC waste pipe. Simply, this tape can now come off and all we'll do is just cover that with a large piece of bark. Hey okay, guys, because of the uh, current COVID lockdown here in Sydney, uh, we are still waiting on our cleanup crew. So our uh, spring tails and our isopods. Uh, so for us to finish this build today, what we're gonna do is give it a good water in. We're gonna put the mesh lid on. We're gonna put our LED grow light above that. So that way the plants are encouraged to, uh, to grow with their lighting. Um, and then the only other considerations are obviously when the uh, cleanup crew come, they will go into the enclosure. And then later on down the track, once all the plants are established and we do actually put our frogs in there, we will give them a, uh, a heat source and some UVB as well. So. Uh, guys, we're just going to give a bit of a water and we'll go from there. Okay guys, so that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed this content and I hope you also agree that these bioactive enclosures are a beautiful piece to any reptile room. Now guys, if, you, uh, if you've had any successes or even any fails with a uh, bioactive enclosure at your place, we'd love to hear about it. Let us know down in the comment section below. Guys, while you're at it, if you haven't already done so, please do hit that like button, subscribe, turn on those post notifications, that way you won't miss a coming video. And as always guys, if you've got them, keep your beard treated and your reptiles heated.